<laughs> in studio with Steve Catlett from the Berkeley County Commission. Steve, good morning to good you. Good morning, John. Good morning. Good John. morning, Steve. Always good to see you. Great to have you here. And you brought uh, uh, some gifts here, too. Look at the These are massive tomatoes. Uh, not bad. They're huh? Not the largest I've grown this year. But, really? Uh, it's you been got a good year. Bigger you, ones than those? It was the driest May I've ever seen in history. Oh, that it was. But then, since then, it's the rain has been plentiful. These are amazing. And, uh, I have the, I knew the you deer in my those. yard are just eating everything. Oh, yeah. yeah. I have it fenced in, of course, because I live in a rural area, and mm -hmm. the deer and rabbits and groundhogs, and we, we have it all. Yeah. Rabbits are bad this year. We enjoy them. They're over. Ever. Yeah. Well, you enjoy them when they're not eating yeah. Bad in, <laughs> in what, Bad in what way? The population of rabbits is huge. <laughs> oh. There, there are so many rabbits this year. I've, more than I've ever seen in any spring, so. summer. Well, they... Um, <laughs> They got the word that uh, we're growing around here, so more Terrible. people coming. So the rabbits have said we, these people need more rabbits around, so we're going to move there. Not so, as many fox around uh, because if there were, there wouldn't be as many rabbits. <laughs> that that is correct. Yeah. Yeah. Steve, I want to talk to you uh, about a lot of things, but first and foremost, of course, is uh, Lambert Pool. I know, you, of course, you spent your career as the head of Parks and Recreation. Lambert was always a bit of a struggle especially over the last 10 years to keep that place open and operating and functioning. And now I think the decision's made that it just can't continue the way it is. We need a different plan there. It's uh, almost 50 years old, so um, they don't build them to last forever. Right. And uh, we started s some serious issues 10 years ago, like you mentioned, and um, been keeping it open since. But uh, at some point it gets to that uh, you know, deadline where it's, it's, you just can't keep it running any longer. So. What was the issue with the ground and the ground water there, Steve? Well, what was the problem? The pool was built in 19, opened in 1975. I started in 1976 at my job as a park director. and But it's probably, even though it's uh, the highest elevation in Martinsburg, uh, high streets near Lambert Park, mm -hmm. uh, it was probably the worst place in Martinsburg to build a pool uh, with any depth to it. And this particular pool had a 12-foot deep diving well and the ground pressure there, it's shale ground, and so it holds water. And there's a tremendous amount of water pressure there. And so in the off-season, we had two pools we maintained, War Memorial and Lambert. You had to keep Lambert about three-fourths full because if you didn't, the entire deep end bottom would just push out from the groundwater pressure. At War Memorial, you could leave, we didn't, but you could leave it completely empty. It was in limestone, and you didn't have any ground pressure issues at all there. So. It's just the nature of the soil there, conditions. Uh, so it's, it, it was not a good spot to build the pool initially. And, and, uh, but we made it through 49 years later. And so it's certainly served its you know, life expectancy. Mm -hmm. And um, they've got to decide now which direction to go. Uh, there's a lot of talk about a spray park perhaps replacing it so there's no depth of water there where you have to deal with the ground pressure issue. Uh, I don't think it would be a problem if it were like a uh, five foot deep pool, uh, but it's when you go down 12 feet for a diving well, and now the standards for diving for that, even for one meter is over 13 and a half feet, so it would even be deeper. Um, uh, it wouldn't be smart to, to to put another pool back in that same location mm -hmm. in my mind. So. so but it's a challenge, you know, and um, we kept both pools open over the years because, uh, you know, aquatics, uh, our aquatic program is more than just public swimming. Uh, we had swim lessons at War Memorial over the years. We had the swim team practicing and had all their home meets at Lambert. Uh, we had senior swim, senior aerobics, and did a, a lot of private parties. And so there was a lot going on other than just, you know, public swimming, uh, uh, daily swimming. And so uh, it was nice to have both bodies of water. And, and the, the group that got left out of the loop with Lambert closing this year was the swim team, uh, 115 members, and they had no place to practice or to have their meets. So uh, first time in 40-plus years that they weren't able to have a season, and that's a real shame. And, um, you know, the hope is uh, we've talked about it for 30 years um, is to have an indoor aquatic center here in Berkeley County. I think we've grown to the point where we need that. Uh, the question is, can we afford it? Uh, if you do it right, you're going to spend $25, 30000000 million just to build the structure, and then you're looking at a $2-plus million a year operational cost. Uh, I'm hoping that there's going to be a meeting soon with all the players, city, county, school board, and the hospital, because I think they're the key to it. 
the, the, the two entities that can afford an indoor facility are universities and hospitals. Uh, Shepherd University has one, of course. They charge it to the tuition of the students, whether they use the facility or not, so they guaranteed source of operational funds. In the hospital situation, they have therapeutic opportunities and things that they can do. And so, and they have the largest budget in the county in terms of uh, 500 million plus that they could sustain the operation e much easier than local government could. It would be too big of an animal for city or county government to take on and certainly for the park system to take on as a single entity uh, to tr try to keep it open and operating it. So uh, it's a big challenge for our community, but it's one that, uh, you know, there's a lot of support for it. Uh, can we put the money together and build it in a place and then have it so it's, it's self-sustained, and that's the key. So uh, hopefully we can work on that in the next few years and, and make something happen. Can residents access the university pool? Do you know? They do, yes. Uh, and uh, th there's a fee for it. I think it's the last I've heard is $68 a month so for non-student usage down in Shepherdstown. So, mm -hmm. and, and they get they get a lot of use from the community, too. Of course, it's... Most indoor facilities are more than just the aquatic part. They're the wellness stuff, you know, with the treadmill, the track, and all that. So it's a complete fitness center. All those and weight things. and Yeah. All yeah. That. So uh, that's the key to it, you know. Uh, you go into University of West Virginia, where they built one several years back, $35 million facility. And I, I walk in there, and there's seven basketball courts. There's climbing walls. There's all the, you know, uh, f equipment. And the most expensive part of the facility is the pool, and the pool has four people in it, and the rest of it's full. You know, the yeah. basketball courts are full. And, but in this community, you know, it's really important to our seniors. It's really important to our swim team members. You know, our, our students at our four county high schools are, are driving to Shepherd University to compete and practice, and that's a shame. They should be able to stay here in Berkeley County. Uh, there's going to be a fifth high school in the near future. Uh, so, so it would be very helpful to, to do that and, and I think really truthfully if we had our own facility here in Berkeley County the high school teams would double the first year the number of uh, participants on their teams because of the convenience sure. you know, and not having to drive so so it, it's a it's a uh, uh, a really important thing to the community uh, financially though it's a big animal and uh, it's one that uh, I hope some way we can figure out how to face it and and, and maybe uh Make it happen. It would be a real wonderful thing. So, would yeah. it make sense to build a pool into the plans for future high schools? Uh, suggested that years ago when they built Spring Mills High School. And, of course, uh, when you go out to the voters and all, though, you know, to get bonds passed, uh, then it's considered a detriment to have it on the ballot, you know, to build a pool. You know, why, why they need a pool, you know. But the suggestion was build one of Spring Mills High School so all four county high schools could use it. And then Parks and Rec could come in on non-school hours and use it for swim lessons and things mm -hmm. like that and uh, that, that would be a good fit and in virginia that's what they do as we all know they have the tax resources to do that and they have pools in all the high schools in virginia most of them you know and it makes a lot of sense yeah. and then the community uses it too yeah. and steve i think you're absolutely right uh, that 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 uh, pretty soon you're going to have to figure out some way to have an indoor pool mm -hmm. uh, here near Martinsburg mm -hmm. uh, that people can use so that so many people don't have to go mm -hmm. all the way to Shepherdstown to use it. And you're right about not too long from now, there'll be a fifth high school uh, in Berkeley County. Not too long from now, there's going to be a third mm -hmm. high school in Jefferson County. Mm -hmm. And the more of those that happened, uh, if, if you feed them all into that pool at Shepherd, it's just, just crowds and yeah. crowds and crowds. So, well, yeah. What, what you're doing, John, is practicing at 9 o'clock o'clock at night on school night you know yeah and then driving home you know and it just just doesn't make sense right but it makes sense in this that it's, it's it's we have to find that money to build it you know and yeah the hospital uh, has the land on exit 14 there 70 some acres they purchase and i think they're willing to use the land for that purpose now can we get them involved in terms of actually building the facility that's another issue and that's the one that uh, we need to come together as a group of uh, uh, entities and talk about it and try to make sense out of it and try to make it happen. Steve, Maria Lawrenson, who's going to be coasting tomorrow with Bill, by the way, is mm -hmm. uh, listening, and she commented that she sat on the committee to build the indoor pool slash cover war memorial uh, years ago. We were yep. so close with the levy vote. I, I th think I remember going uh, through that and covering that. What went uh, wrong that that fell short? Well, um, back years ago in the 90s war memorial pool was the same situation that lambert is today yep. 
we couldn't guarantee the water quality. So we shut the pool down in 1995, okay? Uh, actually, after the 95 season. So in 96, 97, the pool was closed because we couldn't guarantee the water quality. And it was a real shame because it left a big empty uh, spot right in the middle of War Memorial Park. You know, the pool was the centerpiece of the whole park in a sense. Uh, but we had to do it. We, the safety of the community was most important. And so we uh, went asked the governing bodies at the time, city, county, and school board, to uh, at the time, $2 million to build a new pool, but it cover it. And it, it seems like a, a funny amount now, doesn't it? It does. It would, but anyway, and it had sections in the roof that would open in the summer so you get natural air and stuff, but then have it so you could use it indoors. Well, after being closed for two years, the city and county came to the park system and said, look, said, we're going to give you each a half a million dollars to build the outdoor pool and the new bathhouse. And if you want to cover it, you have to raise the money yourself. So, okay, so we tried for several years to raise an additional million dollars. We got up to 400 and some thousand dollars. And at that point, we just said, look, uh, we're not going to get it done. So truthfully, uh, what we, we took the money, we, all the people that contributed, we, we responded to them and said, hey, do you, want, do, do you want your money back or would you be okay with us allowing us the money to build our first ever rec center in berkeley county which is the berkeley 2000 rec center and 99 percent of the people said sure so we built with those funds and then additional funds from the berkeley 2000 foundation uh the first ever berkeley 2000 rec center in berkeley county and um and so it was a positive thing from it because we got our rec center but uh we didn't get the indoor pool obviously Mm -hmm. so uh, and truthfully i don't know if, if um it, it, it would have been it was a real risk for the park board at that time because if we would have had the money to build the indoor pool the, the, the second problem is how do you subsidize it and keep it open you know I've, I've visited 50 over my years in parks and rec traveling around the country and the ones that were publicly built by public park systems the, the, the best one I was ever in was subs, uh, they, they generated 80 percent of self-sustained 20 percent was subsidized by government most of them are about 50, 60 percent, and then government subsidizes the operation. So, um, and at the time, I don't think we were going to get 25, 20 percent subsidy money from the city and county. Because you were generating what, 90 percent of your revenue? Uh, we we were, yeah, well, 70 percent. Right? 70. We generated 70 percent of our revenue over the years. Yeah. Okay. But, but the pool's a different animal. Why right? why is the pool so expensive on a monthly maintenance note? Well, year round. You have to uh, have water quality year-round, okay? You have to have a humidification system. You have to have a heat system. And it's it's very expensive to operate, plus staffing it. What, what, what people don't understand on, on swimming pools, whether it's indoor or outdoor, you, you have to guard the space, not the number of people. So whether you have 20 people in there swimming or 200 people in there swimming, you got to have X number of lifeguards there on duty. And for an indoor pool, they want it open at 5 or 6 in the morning before work, and they want it open until late 11 at night. At times seven days a week, times year round. It's a lot of man hours. And you can understand. So the budget is uh, two million plus to uh, operate a facility like that. Staffing hours and then uh, water quality now. Chlorine's doubled the price that it used to be. Just in the last three years, it's doubled its price. So it's um, it's an expensive animal. And if you, you know, the shame that I would like to not hopefully it doesn't happen is we build something that's not adequate. Just to say we have an indoor pool. If we're going to do it, let's try to do it right. Mm-hmm. Uh, when uh, several years ago I worked with the CEO over at the hospital uh, and um, we had a plan actually drawn out a therapeutic pool a large one competition pool and a leisure pool to build a facility over there and those those plans are still available uh, yeah, Tony, nice Zelenka, Tony, Tony Zelenka was a good friend of mine he's the CEO there and he was all on board with it but we could never get now with the hospital the funding channels come through WVU in West Virginia and out of Morgantown mostly. And so, but, but I, there's not a strong interest from their part now, but um, I think at some point maybe that'll change. And um, I think they really need to be a player in it for it to be successful. Mm-hmm. I really do. And um, let's just hope it happens at some point. But the, the era of two pools being open in the summer in Berkeley County is over for the foreseeable future. It looks like it, yeah. And that's a shame because, like I said, it's it, the, the team, the, the group that gets left out is the swim team. Now, they can go to War Memorial. Uh, when we built War Memorial several years back, there was a, a leisure pool and, and a lap pool. 
it's only 25 yards instead of 25 meters like Lambert, which is 75 feet instead of 82. But there's a room for six lanes there. They could put the stripes back on the, the pool. The starting blocks are there. They have to put a new base in, and they could have competition there. The problem is now the scheduling of it, though. How do you fit the you – know, the swim team used to come in at Lambert at 6 o'clock in the morning and start practicing every right. day. And then by 10 o'clock we had them out, and then we had the seniors in there because we had swim lessons. So now you'd have to have swim lessons, swim team, senior aerobics, senior swim, all this in one facility. Could it be done? Yes. It would be a scheduling nightmare? Yes. But it would be better than no facility at all. Mm -hmm. So no one gets left out. Um, Were we successful in seasonal staffing this year, this summer? For yes, yes. This seasonal staffing thing uh, – you know, for some reason, John, it was never an issue here in Berkeley County. We okay. always had plenty of lifeguards. There's places in the state of West Virginia and across the country that had to close their pools because they couldn't yeah, have enough lifeguards. Yeah. But we've always been very fortunate there. And, of course, this year with uh, only one pool open, you only needed half as many. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, but we never had an issue. Over the, I was there for 45 years, and we never had an issue having enough lifeguards to, to manage our pools, and, and we were very fortunate there. But we worked hard with those kids to try to uh, – you know, we didn't pay them great, but still, we treated them right, but we also expected a lot out of them. You know, you're sitting there, you got two big liabilities with swimming pools. You got one is, is somebody from drowning, obviously, and 45 years for me in public Ke swimming Careful pools. with the hands, Steve. Yeah, <laughs> but what I want to say is, never had a drowning in Berkeley County, okay, in my 45 years. And I, I felt blessed every year Labor Day came. I would thank the Lord. For, thank you for getting me through another summer here, mm -hmm. getting us through another summer. And you got 15, 16 year old kids out there, you know, guarding your pools. And and then the other, of course, is water quality. And we have never had a major issue with water quality. And that's 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 very that's as important as uh, you know the E. coli thing has uh, could be very serious. So uh, there, there's two big liabilities there. But uh, you know, communities expect pools. They want pools. Sure. Uh, they enjoy pools. Um, is it something that government should provide for our community? I, I, I think so people expect it now in saying that over the years you know when war memorial back in the in the day before we took it over the swimming pool financed the whole operation of the park 50 cents to get in but it was packed because it was the only show in town and now you have every subdivision with the pool you have you know five people that have their own private pool in their backyard and so the public swimming thing is not the the need of it but there's still a, a large group of people that that don't have that pool and access that need it but then all the other things, swim lessons, swim team, uh, senior aerobics, senior swim. So it's the whole package that you have to look at and not just the demand for public swimming. And um, and I hope we can fig figure out a way to make it happen. I really do, because it's important to this community. Mr. Doyle, um, th th could we move on to something else <laughs> beside pools? Is, is that something permissible? Anything you yeah. yeah, that's what I'm waiting sure. for. Uh, and, and whenever I'm here, Steve, and anybody comes on from the Berkeley County Commission, I ask this question. Okay. Uh, when is Berkeley County going to get zoning? Yeah. Um, obviously, it's been on the ballot several times. Mm -hmm. It's been a, been a while. Um, I, 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 from the general talk that I've had with the other commissioners, if the public came to us uh, and, and asked to have it back on the ballot and there was a petition signed, to do so, I think that the county commission would consider putting it back on the ballot. Obviously, it needs to be on the ballot. Certainly, uh, yeah. And uh, I, I wouldn't support it any other way. If uh, you know, back when I first got on in January, there was this uh, public nuisance ordinance that was in the plans, and to me, I read it the first time, the first week I was there, and it was, it was zoning. And I said, we can't have this unless the community votes on this, you know. And that's that's important. Is the community ready for that, John? I I, I don't know. Uh, well, it, obviously, the, the, yeah. the detriment to us by not having zoning, and if the state would change the law, I think they should. The code says for us to have impact fees on developers, we have to have zoning in place. And I, I don't know, with a county growing like we are, yeah. we're, we're a rare exception, that that shouldn't be taken out of the ordinance and allow us to have impact fees regardless. I really believe that. Um, well, I was there when we got the, the Local Powers Act passed mm -hmm. to begin with mm -hmm. many years ago. Right. And we were hoping to be able to get impact fees without that requirement. Mm -hmm. But m almost all the legislators from other parts of the state, Democrat and Republican, said, no, 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 no. Mm -hmm. You don't get to have impact fees unless you're willing to pass zoning. And, and there were a lot of people that thought what they were really after was 
if that required zoning, then their county wouldn't have yeah. impact fees. Right. And that's right. so that's the uh, that we're stuck there. And, I, and I, I'm sure the majority of counties today would not uh, pass zoning in, in West Virginia, obviously. Um, oh, I'm not sure about that. We've it, it's it's there are now nine that have there are five that have countywide zoning. Mm -hmm. Uh, and there are four others that have zone, partial zoning. Mm -hmm. Berkeley's one of those mm -hmm. that has, uh, mm -hmm. uh, I think it's Tuscarora District that is right. zoned. Yeah, that's a, specialized zoning yeah. in special areas. And I've, I've talked to some planners who have been talking with some of the south, the southern coalfield counties mm -hmm. who are telling them, listen, we want to have zoning in order to attract more business here. Mm -hmm. And that's partly because those nearby counties in Virginia – uh, in what is called the, the far southwestern Virginia, Wise, Grundy, Big Stone Gap, Norton, uh, those places, actually about eight, ten years ago, became the last counties in the state of Virginia to adopt zoning. And they believe that has helped them attract some businesses that would not have otherwise come. So you've got some of these counties that border on Virginia there that see that happening that are saying, you know, this might help us. Uh, Steve, I, I don't think Berkeley County is having trouble attracting businesses, though, John. No, 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 no. But what I'm, the question was other counties in West Virginia adopting zoning. And I'm and I'm suggesting that you may see that change over the next few years in some of the some of the other counties. If if if, if I could get to my point, though, the, the one I was about to make, mm -hmm. Steve, I remember both times before when zoning was on the ballot in Berkeley County. Mm -hmm. I think it lost by three to one the first time and two to one the second time. So it was still a big margin, but it was not nearly as big a margin as the first time. And both times you had organized groups of people out opposing it. Mm -hmm. And you did not in either case have an organized group out supporting it. Mm -hmm. I think if it's ever going to be passed, you're going to have to have that organized group. And, and to me, uh, a lot of the uh, opposition misses the point uh, one of the most important purposes of zoning is to protect the property values of the people who live here. Mm -hmm. That's what it does. Sure. Now, John Gilstrap, I'm sorry, I want to no. finish my point. <laughs> no, and, and I just kind of want to play devil's advocate on this because if the argument against zoning, as I understand it, is don't tell me what I can do and can't do with my land. Sure. You know, kind of hard stop. That's sure. where it goes. So if we take impact fees out of out of play, what is what's the the logical argument in favor of zoning that counteracts that mm -hmm. don't tell me what I can do with my family farmland protect from property values well if I, I if, yeah. if, if I've got if I if I have 150 acres of family property and, I, and some in a factory wants to buy it and they're going to spend you know a hundred million dollars that I can take to the bank that protects my property value because I can plant it there and I don't have to worry about zoning saying I can't I would say that's not my position necessarily, but I think that's the argument. But, but zoning doesn't work that way, uh, it, particularly if you have the kind of zoning that 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 many rural areas in in Virginia have, and in and and in, in I think every county in Maryland has zoning, even Garrett County in far western Maryland. It's a much more flexible kind of zoning, uh, and and what it does is allows people to come up and say, okay. This 150 acres, and let's say I got 20 acres next to it. Mm -hmm. This factory you're going to put on there, what's it going to do? This, this, this. And it, and it allows uh, a, 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 for a process by which I can be assured that what you're doing with your property is not going to negatively affect mine. Hey, uh, we're about a minute and a half over time here. Steve, I want to give you the final word. If there's any other information you wanted to get out, you didn't get a chance to, go right ahead, sir. Well, I just uh, I wanted to say one of the things I've only been in office seven months that I'm really proud of is us going after the out-of-state tag people that haven't been paying their taxes. And there's no reason not to do it now because you can get, starting in January, you can get credit for the, paying your personal property taxes. That's right. uh, we're going to use the money. Of course, 78 percent of it's going to go to the Board of Ed, and hopefully they'll use this money to buy, to purchase uh, to pay for more resource officers in our school to protect our children. So thank you, Steve. That's really important. Good to see you again. Good to see you. Thank Appreciate you. Appreciate you coming in, Steve Catlett, John. the Berkeley County Commission at 902.